What's up, lovely people? This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our series on rheumatology. Today is scleroderma signs and symptoms. In the previous two videos, we have talked about scleroderma introduction and the different types of scleroderma. Today, let's make it clinical. Let's start by answering the question of the previous video. What is the differential diagnosis of a claw hand? Well, a claw hand could be clumpy palsy, could be systemic sclerosis, or could be crow Foucaisay syndrome. Who are these people? Systemic sclerosis is a chronic inflammatory symmetrical polyarthritis that involves peripheral joints and is characterized by skin thickening and systemic inflammation everywhere. Collagen is everywhere. Collagen deposition in my skin, GI tract, lungs, heart, kidneys, etc. It is more common in females than males, like most autoimmune diseases. Diseases of immunodeficiency are more common in men. Diseases of autoimmunity are more common in women. Pathophysiologically, scleroderma is an endothelial dysfunction. This is the most important two words in this slide. Endothelial dysfunction. And then you have collagen everywhere. First of all, who made the collagen? Uh, fibroblasts, baby. Collagen deposition everywhere will lead to interstitial and perivascular fibrosis and sclerosis everywhere. Microvascular damage, oh, no blood supply, no oxygen, skin ulcerations. The T lymphocytes will react to an unknown antigen and this will lead to what? Proliferation? And then the T helper cells, specifically the T helper 2. What's the difference between T helper 2 and T helper 1? Well, T helper 1 will help their sisters. They will help the cytotoxic T lymphocytes. But T helper 2 will help their neighbors, the B lymphocytes. That's a big difference. Okay, when they help the B lymphocytes, the B lymphocytes will become plasma cells. Plasma cells will secrete antibodies. How do these leukocytes interact together? Interleukin. This is the internet of the leukocytes. Interleukin. In this case, it's interleukin-13 and TGF-beta. Those are the ones who activated the fibroblasts. Fibroblasts depositing collagen, fibronectin, and other extracellular matrix proteins everywhere. Also, the endothelial damage will release platelet-derived growth factor and TGF-beta activating the fibroblast. What is happening to my vessel? My vessel is getting narrower. That's why I'm getting ischemia. Why is the vessel getting narrower? For many reasons. The endothelial dysfunction, increasing vasoconstrictors such as endothelin, but decreasing vasodilators such as nitric oxide and prostaglandin I2, aka the prostacyclin, which keeps the blood cycling. Here is half of immunology in one slide. You remember the T lymphocytes? Yeah, we have T helper and T cytotoxic. Okay, how about T suppressors or T regulatory? They are here. T helpers, I have TH1 and TH2. T helper 1 will help their sisters. They will help the cytotoxic T cells. Help them do what? Do their job. Kill the cancer, kill the fungus, and kill the virus infected cells. T helper 2 will help the B lymphocytes. And this is the story of all of the antibodies and interleukins, etc. Especially interleukin 13. Don't ever forget this. Scleroderma equals interleukin 13 and TGF beta. Many terms are used to describe this disease, including scleroderma, systemic sclerosis, sclerodactyly, etc. To understand the difference, watch my previous video. How many subtypes does systemic sclerosis have? Gazillion subtypes, but let's classify them into just five. Diffuse cutaneous systemic sclerosis, limited cutaneous systemic sclerosis, aka Crest syndrome, localized scleroderma or localized systemic sclerosis, systemic sclerosis, sign scleroderma. So you have visceral symptoms without the skin symptoms, sign means without. So if I say medicosis, sign perfectionalis, that will be the end of my career. Systemic sclerosis sometimes overlaps with other rheumatological diseases. The distinction between the diffuse cutaneous and the limited cutaneous systemic sclerosis was discussed in the previous video. In a nutshell, diffuse is diffuse all over the place. Limited is more limited. Okay, which one is more likely to affect the viscera? Diffuse. Which one is more likely to affect the viscera? Early diffuse. Since this is diffuse, it affects the skin distally and proximally. How about limited distal? Distal to what? Distal to the elbows and the knees. Antibodies, the diffuse, have the anti-scleroderma 70 and anti-RNA polymerase 3. How about the Crest syndrome? It has the anti-centromere antibody. 
The diffuse tends to have the scleroderma renal crisis that's a freaking emergency. It can lead to malignant hypertension and hypertensive encephalopathy and can destroy you with end organ damage. It can also have interstitial lung disease. On the other hand, Crest syndrome loves the pulmonary hypertension. So we are done with the diffuse versus the limited. Let's talk about the localized skin involvement. We have the circumcised scribed morphia, generalized morphia, pansclerotic morphia, mixed morphia, and lineal scleroderma, and this is a dermatology topic. Seizures can happen. And then we have the systemic sclerosis signs, scleroderma, visceral involvement without skin involvement, only 1% of patients. Good luck if the freaking family doctor can diagnose this. Well, I thought that scleroderma was supposed to always have skin symptoms. Shut up. And then scleroderma can overlap with other diseases such as systemic sclerosis plus lupus, systemic sclerosis plus rheumatoid, systemic sclerosis plus Sjogren. Signs and symptoms of scleroderma in a nutshell. So skin is hard, thick, tight, height abound, swollen, fibrotic, atrophic, parchment-like skin, mask-like feet, claw-like hands, radial furrowing around the lips. The mouth gets narrower and some textbook will call it fish mouth which reminds me of mitral stenosis. Skin ulceration, digital vasculitis, big time, digital infarct, big time. Renard's phenomenon is the most common initial finding. Dystrophic calcification on the GI tract, decreased esophageal motility leading to dysphagia and reflux disease, decreased intestinal villi leading to malabsorption, wide mouth diverticula leading to bacterial overgrowth. So even though the patient's mouth is narrow, the diverticula are wide. It's just a way to remember it. Respiratory system, interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, respiratory failure is the most common cause of death, renal problems, glomerular vasculitis, arteriolar vasculitis, hyperplastic arterial sclerosis, malignant hypertension, infarctions, etc. And if the patient has scleroderma nephrosis, ACE inhibitors work like a charm. This is Renaud's phenomenon. Fingers start as gray and then they become blue and then they become red. Renaud's phenomenon is the most common initial finding. Occurs at digital vessels. What do you mean? This is not the opposite of analog. Get your head out of your sphincter. I mean fingers and toes. Digits. Vasculitis, thrombosis and perivascular fibrosis. Color changes at the digits. Claw hands and this is sclerodactyly when the skin is so tight digital infarct, so CCD. So, Fauci is the head of the CDC, but if I have scleroderma, I will suffer from CCD. Enough with my dad jokes. White, then blue, then red. Why white? Ischemia, no blood supply. Why blue? Hypoxia, no oxygen. Why red? Reperfusion. What is the difference between Renaud's disease and Renaud's syndrome? Renaud's disease is idiopathic. The patient has it for some reason and no one knows why. But Renaud's syndrome is a syndrome. It happens with other diseases. It happens secondary to other diseases, such as secondary to systemic sclerosis. So this is a patient with systemic sclerosis plus Renaud syndrome. This is a patient with lupus plus Renaud syndrome. This is the patient with rheumatoid arthritis, then Renaud syndrome. Skin manifestations. The most commonly targeted organ in systemic sclerosis is the skin. Very important. Edema will lead to thickened skin. The skin is thick, height abound, and loss of normal folds. Extensive dystrophic subcutaneous calcification. And then you have pigmentation, depigmentation, till angiectasia. What does tele mean? Far distant angio vessel ectasia dilation. Dilation of distant vessels. Fingertips, lips, toes, distant vessel, not your aorta, get your head out of your valve, ulcerations, etc. So edema happens before the thickened skin and the fingers are involved before the face. It goes this way, in this order, fingers, and then we go upwards, arms, shoulders, trunk, neck, face. Metacosis, you said uh, dystrophic calcification, as opposed to what? As opposed to metastatic calcification. What's the difference? In a nutshell, dystrophic is local, caused by local. Metastatic is global, caused by global. What the flip do you mean? Dystrophic, let's say I have necrosis in my finger. That's it. That's my only problem in life. Necrosis in my finger. What kind of calcification will be this? Uh, dystrophic, local, caused by local. How about, let's say I have a hyperparathyroidism. My parathyroid gland is dishing out parathyroid hormone like crazy, raising my serum calcium like crazy. Calcium is high all over my body. Calcification all over my body. Tracheal calcification, endocardial calcification, skin calcification, all over the place. 
This is metastatic calcification, global, caused by a systemic disease. If you try to pull the skin of a patient with scleroderma, it's very tight, very thick. If you do it with illness, oh, look at this elasticity, wow. Moreover, ask the patient to make a fist. In scleroderma, I'm sorry, I can't. Ehlers-Danlos, it's easy. Joint manifestations were discussed before. Chronic inflammatory symmetrical polyarthritis that involves peripheral joints. What's gonna happen to the GI tract? The esophagus will get esophageal dysmotility. Why? Collagen deposition. Be more specific. In the lamina propria of the esophagus. Be more specific of the lower two-thirds of the esophagus. Near the lower esophageal sphincter? Yup. You know that on my channel, I love sphincters. Dysmotility of the esophagus will lead to what? Dysphagia. I cannot swallow. I cannot swallow what? Solids or liquids? Both. Because I cannot move. If I cannot move with liquids, I cannot move with solids. Duh! This is a functional obstruction, which is different from an anatomical obstruction. Let's say I have, a, uh, let's say, a ring, for example. Okay, that's an anatomical defect. Now, I will have uh, problems swallowing solids, but liquid, uh, it's just easy. How about a cancer that's growing? Well, initially, I will have dysphagia to solids only. As the tumor grows and grows and grows, I will have dysphagia to solids and liquids. Esophageal ulcerations, esophageal strictures, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Why? Due to dysfunction of the lower esophageal sphincter. And then the reflux for a long period of time can lead to Barrett's esophagus. What the flip is this? intestinal metaplasia, glandular metaplasia. Why did you change your esophagus from squamous epithelium to intestinal columnar epithelium? Because this is better at handling the acid that is being refluxed from the stomach. Barrett's esophagus increases my risk of esophageal adenocarcinoma. Contrast that with cigarette smoking, which increases my risk of esophageal squamous cell carcinoma. Stomach can suffer from dysmotility into postprandial bloating. What does prandial mean? Um, a food. Shut up. It means lunch. It's a Latin word. In Latin, prandium is lunch. So if I say medicuro prandium, it means I eat lunch in Latin. Small bowel can suffer dysmotility, malabsorption due to loss of villi and diverticula. Wide mouth diverticula. Where? Could be jejunum, ileum, or colon. The colon can suffer dysmotility, causing constipation. So, esophageal dysmotility, stomach dysmotility, small bowel dysmotility, large bowel dysmotility. Nobody's moving. Respiratory tract manifestations include SOB, which stands for shorts of breath, because I'm a good guy, I do not curse, and cough. The cough is non-productive, clean cough, without sputum. Interstitial lung disease, be specific, lung fibrosis, is it unilateral or bilateral? Bilateral, okay. Restrictive lung disease, therefore what? Hypoxemia, baby. What do you mean? Decrease oxygen in the blood. This is the partial pressure of oxygen. And of course, decreased diffusing capacity because the lung is thick and stiff, called fibrosis. Any restrictive lung disease, especially lung fibrosis, can have tachypnea, crackles, nail clubbing. Describe the crackles. Are they inspiratory crackles or expiratory crackles? Inspiratory crackles. Early or mid to late? Mid to late. Do they disappear with cough? Shut up. You cannot cough up fibrosis. But if it was like a suppurative lung disease, like an abscess, of course you can cough it. And the crackles can disappear after you cough. But you cannot cough up fibrosis. You have crackles before coughing and after coughing. Nail clubbing can happen in some patients, but not all. The lung is toast, and then the right heart is responsible for pumping blood against this thick, sick lung. That's a huge resistance. Eventually, the pressure inside the pulmonary artery will go up. Hashtag pulmonary hypertension. As a result of this increased pressure in the pulmonary artery, what's going to happen to the right ventricle? Oh, it will hypertrophy. Why is this? To counteract the high pressure. And this will lead to right ventricular hypertrophy and right-sided heart failure. Now, when a problem in the lungs cause a problem in the right heart, what do you call this? Cool pulmonary. A problem in the pulmonary has led to a problem in the cool. Moreover, pulmonary endothelial dysfunction. Remember, endothelial dysfunction was the most important word in pathogenesis. 
can also cause the hypertension, which will lead to the hypertrophy and the heart failure. You know the rest of the story. What is the most common cause of death in scleroderma patients? Respiratory failure. Cardiac problems, pericarditis, bradycardia, eventually heart block, which is AV nodal block. Myocardial fibrosis, pulmonary hypertension, causing right ventricular hypertrophy, causing right-sided heart failure, hashtag cold pulmonary. Don't forget malignant hypertension. Renal problems, vasculitis, what kind of necrosis is this? Fibrinoid necrosis, and this is a very important point. Any vasculitis with any autoimmune disease is always fibrinoid necrosis. Do you remember rheumatoid arthritis? Yeah. It had vasculitis. What kind of necrosis was it? Fibrinoid necrosis. We'll talk about lupus later. It has vasculitis. What kind of vasculitis is this? Fibrinoid necrosis. Have you ever heard of granulomatosis with polyangitis, polyarthritis nodosa, etc.? What kind of vasculitis and necrosis is this? Fibrinoid necrosis. Smooth muscle proliferation leading to that onion skin appearance of the hyperblastic arteriolosclerosing and you have necrotizing arteriolitis. And this affects the afferent arteriole and the efferent arteriole. Eventually, the vasculitis and the necrosis will lead to thrombosis, infarction, scleroderma, renal crisis. That's an emergency because it causes malignant hypertension with end organ damage. It can destroy your kidney. It can destroy your brain. Hashtag hypertensive encephalopathy, specifically cerebral edema, which will lead to mental status abnormalities. If the patient is suffering from scleroderma nephrosis, give ACE inhibitors. ACE inhibitors are great for three kidney diseases. Number one, diabetic nephropathy. Number two, scleroderma nephrosis. Number three, henoch Schonlein purpura nephrosis. If your woke professor told you this, I will retire from YouTube and work at Wells Fargo. Some pearls for the pros. Skin manifestations usually appear before visceral manifestations. Systemic sclerosis in brief, or in a nutshell, the cause is unknown. It's probably autoimmune, more common in females, collagen deposition, endothelial dysfunction, fibrosis and sclerosis. The most initial finding is Raynaud's phenomenon. The most targeted organ is the skin. The most common cause of death is respiratory failure. What is the pathogenesis of systemic sclerosis, endothelial dysfunction, collagen everywhere, fibrosis and sclerosis, microvascular damage, don't forget, CD4, TH2, lymphocyte, and leukin 13, TGF beta, activating the fibroblast, crest syndrome, the C is for calcinosis, R is for Raynaud's phenomena, A is for esophageal dysmotility, S is sclerodactyly and T is telangiectasia. Renaud's phenomena is the earliest sign. Hard, thick, tight, hidebound skin with telangiectasia, esophageal dysmotility and reflux disease, wide mouth, diverticula. Respiratory symptoms, shorts of breath and non-productive cough, interstitial lung fibrosis, respiratory failure is the most common cause of death. Kidney problems, vasculitis, thrombosis, infarction, scleroderma renal crisis, malignant hypertension causing renal failure and hypertensive encephalopathy. Cardiovascular problems including co-pulmonary. Pulmonary hypertension is very important. It can lead to right side heart failure. Also don't forget systemic hypertension can happen. In the next video, we'll talk about the diagnosis and treatment of systemic sclerosis. If you enjoyed this video, you will love my antibiotics course on my website medicosisperfectionaries.com. It comes with 40 videos and PDF notes and cases. If you want to be better than 99% of doctors, master the acid-base imbalances. 8 gigabytes of content, you can download them today. There are no subscriptions on my website, you just download them once and keep them for you forever. You can get a 25% discount towards anything on my website, just use promo code SAVE25, available for the next two students only. Thank you for watching, please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button, you can support me here or here, go to my website to get my premium courses. Thank you for watching, as always, be safe, stay happy, study hard, this is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.